Hey, this is Voxide, and if you want to learn Houdini, you can check out my in-depth courses, link will be in the description. For this next example, I have a simple sphere over here, which has some noise applied to it, and the noise is being animated. This geometry goes into a pyro source, which has density and temperature as attributes. Then I noise up the attributes with an attribute noise, and then I rasterize these attributes and plug these into a pyro solver. And so we end up with a very basic smoke simulation. And over here to the right, I just convert this into a VDB, just so I can get this VDB visualized tree grid. So when I go into a side view, we have this effect and we can talk about what we're trying to achieve in relation to the voxel. And over to the right, this geometry is being plugged into a popnet as a source and it's being advected by a simple pop advec by volumes that's pointing to my velocity volume over here. And advection type is set to update position, velocity update final velocity and advection method trace. So this is a simple particle advec by volume effect. And also a color to fade these out as they age. So what we want to do is compute a gradient volume based on the density. So if I were to go in a side view over here and turn on my visualize tree overlay, and let's maybe step inside Photoshop. What a volume gradient will do is compute a velocity vector that's going in the direction of some increasing value. In our case, the increasing value will be the density. So if I were to look at just this one tendril over here out of my simulation, so let's say that maybe we isolate this tendril. The density for this tendril will be highest right in the center over here. And as it expands outwards, the density will decay. So this is only natural, this is just the natural way that the pyro simulation will work. So if I were to say that maybe over here in the center, we have a voxel with a density value of maybe, let's say 1.4. A voxel next to it that goes outwards will have a smaller value because this decays as it goes out. So maybe this voxel over here will have a smaller value, so maybe this will be 0 0.3. And so on until it reaches something like 0. So the volume gradient will look at all of these values and it will simply give me a vector that's pointing to the, the direction of increasing values. So it will give me a vector that looks something like this. Right? And this will be for each voxel. So over here we'll have vectors that point like this. And this effect will be for the entire simulation. So we will have voxels that contain vectors that go in the direction of the density. So it will point towards the center of these sort of like these tendrils that are forming. So normally when the particles are being pushed by the original velocity of the smoke they might go somewhere like this so they will go along the smoke like so and maybe let's say that they form a shape that's something that looks like this so let's say that this is uh, the particles are now following exactly the shape of the smoke. When we combine this motion with the new velocity field that we create by computing the density, this shape now will turn into something that looks more like this. So first the particles will go in the direction of the smoke and then we combine this movement with the volume gradient velocity and they will also move in this direction. So as a result, the flames will sort of squeeze as it further progresses in the simulation. And this will result in a much more interesting and magical look. So back in Houdini, after this Vel node over here, so this is the original volume, we have this density field that's simply a scalar volume, and we will drop down a volume analysis. and we want the analysis to be gradient, so we want to compute the gradient, and we want to compute the gradient for the density. And now we can see that the density becomes a velocity field, so now density which was previously a scalar field, it has density x, y, and z. So the density now contains vector information. Let's drop down another null here, and we can name this to vel gradient.
and back in my popnet, I will duplicate this advec node by holding alt and plug this after the first one. So maybe I can rename this to advec by vel and this will be advec by density. So in the second one, I will make the sub point to this velocity, this velocity gradient that we created. So control C and paste it over here. And we also need to change the field name now to point to the density. So remember that after we compute this vector, the density now becomes a velocity field. And if I were to preview this result now, we can see that this is terrible, it's all over the place, but this is because the velocity scale by default for this volume is way too high. So I need to set the velocity scale way down, so maybe 0.1, and let's see how this looks. Okay, it's still a little bit too high, but we can already start seeing the new results. So we can start seeing that the flames are sort of being squeezed together as the simulation progresses. And let's maybe drop this down even more, let's maybe try 0.01, and now this should be the right look. Okay, so we can see this nice tendril-like effect and this is a much more interesting look that, than simply advecting by the velocity. So let's go up a level and let's maybe, let's disable the visualize tree. So I have a cache over here that is just uh, the particles being advected by the regular velocity and I have a second version here that is the particles being advected by the gradient as well, so we can see the difference. Okay, so this is much more interesting.